All right, with this video, I want to go over this APA career essay, make sure you understand what I'm looking for. Um, you'll notice there's two parts to that assignment, and I'm going to do uh, separate videos, uh, one on each uh, part. Uh, today is Saturday, October 21st. Um, we're going to page two of our uh, class schedule here. Uh, reflection number five is due on Monday. Uh, this is going to be the most boring, uninteresting thing you read and write about probably in your whole life. Uh, but knowing the differences between APA and MLA formatting and kind of getting them working in your head a little bit is going to be very important for the rest of the class. Uh, generally, for me, it makes it easier to compare the two and you kind of learn how to do both at the same time. Uh, APA, if you're in nursing or sociology, psychology, uh, uh, social sciences, uh, you're going to be writing an APA a lot more than MLA, so it's good to know both of them. Um, after that, the first two paragraphs of the career career essay are due. Uh, then the following Monday, the full draft's due. You're going to do peer reviews on these. Um, once those come in, I'll look over the essays, mainly for the APA formatting. Hopefully, you're getting pretty good at sentences, paragraph development at this point. Um, and then we'll turn in that final version. Um, just go over the, the assignment real quickly. One, you got to do a page in LinkedIn, uh, hopefully, hopefully fairly straightforward. I'll talk about that in a separate video. Uh, but LinkedIn is kind of like a Facebook for professional people looking for jobs, uh, which you're going to be doing here in a little bit, uh, or most of you will be. Some of you, like some of the dual enrollment students, still got a few years there. Uh, but if you don't have a lot to put on, on something like LinkedIn, that's something you should think about. Can you join clubs? Can you make yourself more marketable? Because uh, a lot of people are going to be graduating with the same degree you're getting. Uh, when you graduate, uh, there's going to be some competition there, probably, maybe not. Uh, it's hard to come up with one perfect assignment for you know all the different people in the class. Um, but for the essay assignment, uh, you're going to be writing an APA format. Uh, again, that's the point of reflection number five. It doesn't mean you're going to get APA down perfectly. You're not going to memorize all this you know over one weekend. Uh, but hopefully, it kind of gets you a start. Uh, you can kind of see where we're headed with it. I actually have at least four sources in your essay. I'm basically going to research one your educational uh, requirements for the, your, your career um, and then research the career. Uh, is there growth in that career? Are you going to make decent money? Uh, if you're going to be an English teacher, you're not going to be driving your BMW into the parking lot, right? Uh, other professions are, can be quite lucrative, which, you know, that depends on you. Um, need a short quote, long quote, summary, and paraphrase. That's going to be two from out, here on out. All the punctuation, same thing from here on out. And you got to notice APA likes, generally likes to put things into sections. So I went ahead and did the assignment that way. Uh, you're going to have more than one paragraph for some of these sections. So don't think it's going to be a four-paragraph essay or something. Uh, the first paragraph, once you kind of introduce, you know, the, the field and why you might want to work in it. Uh, why do you want to be a nurse? Do you like people throwing up on you and <laughs> cleaning up blood? Or <laughs> is there more to it than that that's uh, meaningful for you? Um, same thing, if you want to be an English teacher, you better like grading papers, right? Um, and hopefully the idea of this essay is that you kind of get to the end kind of say, yes, you know, there's good and bad, but the good outweigh the bad, and this is what I want to do. Or you might say, wow, I, I didn't know I'd have to go to school for eight years to be a pharmacist, uh, and that I had a good chance of not getting a job after, the, after, the, after I'm done, which is actually not true for pharmacy. Uh, but certain, certain nursing pursuits are you know, kind of fading out. Others are growing. Um, and that's kind of what you want to look for. Uh, second section, uh, what the requirements for the job, that's where you're going to place your academic plan. Uh, then any other required certifications, you know, kid, if you spend all this time getting a nursing degree and you fail your board tests, what are you going to do? Well, hopefully that will never happen. They work hard to make sure it doesn't happen. But uh, Or you just don't like nursing. If you get in there and it's like, oh, all these sick people just, you know, want me to do stuff for them. I don't know if I want to do this the rest of my life. What else can you do with the job? Um... But in this part, you're talking about mainly your education. If you have to get your master's degree after the academic plan, you'll talk about that. Or if you have to go on to, to a doctoral degree, uh, you know, what, you don't have to list all your classes, but how long is that going to take you? How selective are those schools? Um, you know, not everybody gets into the nursing program, right? Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, it wouldn't hurt to talk about the cost of your degree. Uh, Northeast State. Uh, it used to be a fairly cheap college. It's pretty expensive now, right, just to get a two-year degree. Going somewhere like UT or something, uh, 
how much money is that going to cost per semester? Uh, the third section, I uh, want a fairly detailed discussion of your chosen career. Again, how much money are you going to make? Uh, whether local job opportunities, national, international job opportunities. If you must work in Kingsport, Tennessee, are there going to be jobs with you know for you for your field there? <clears throat> are you going to have to go work somewhere else? Um, want the future prospects of the job? Uh, you can go to the website there to find that. They'll tell you if it's growing or shrinking. That's kind of interesting. Some uh, engineers, uh, the field is shrinking a little bit because there's a lot of international competition for uh, those jobs. Uh, nursing uh, looks good. <laughs> uh, you're going to see a growth of like up, upwards of 24 uh, or higher percent over the next 10 years, and that's what you want to see. There'll be jobs out there somewhere for you when you graduate. Um, you know, the other areas are going to fall somewhere in between there. Um, is there any upper mobility? If you get into the job and you don't like it, uh, can you go sideways and, and do something else? Uh, not much I can do with an English degree, right? I can't open my English shop uh, over in the mall. Um, other careers like nursing, you may be able to get into teaching or administration or uh, very av various avenues where one you can move up or you can move sideways. You got some flexibility there. Um, and again, not not all jobs are particularly flexible. You may have to be a little more competitive to get what you want there. Uh, the last section wants you to discuss why you think you're suitable for the job. I want to hear about three good things about the job, three bad things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the level of stress. Um, you know, like teaching English can be a little stressful, but nobody dies if I mislabel a comma splash, right? Um, you give the patient the wrong medication, you could you could kill them. Uh, a lot of stress in the medical field. Um, no, no, not a lot of room for error. Same thing with you're going to be a pharmacist. Uh, if you give somebody the wrong medication, that could be it. Uh, what causes the stress? Uh, if you ever watch those pharmacists and uh, CVS, they're working hard, right? Because those orders keep coming in and they got to fill them and got to do it right. Um, that's a lot of turnover in the job. Uh, about at least 25% of teachers leave the field after the first four years. Uh, what's going on there? Where, where are those, what's getting them stressed out? Uh, why are they leaving? Uh, and can you deal with that? Uh, also, now I want to hear about your marketability. Are there professional clubs, student clubs? Uh, organizations you can uh, uh, join, other internships or volunteer opportunities. Um, right, you don't want to be a nurse, and the first time you step on a hospital is the you know right after you graduate, which I, I realize they don't do that with the program. But um, what else you know? What else have you done other than just you know sit in a classroom and, and do do that work? Uh, do you have good contacts, good references? And basically, what can you do over the next you know few years or however long it's going to take you to get your degree to make yourself marketable and one of the best candidates, whatever job you're going to apply for. Um, so probably at some point in your career, in your education, you might have had to do some kind of, you know, what I want to be when I grow up kind of paper. But hopefully this has been a lot more detailed with the academic plan, uh, details about what, you can, what you're going to do with your degree, what op options you have when you have that degree. Um, let's look at a sample paper real quickly. Um, let me make that, actually make that smaller. Uh, this is a student of mine over at DB. Um, but you notice with APA, you have that running head, uh, then in all caps, a shortened version of your title. Um, he doesn't quite do that there. Does it? Well, yeah, he does. Uh, then the page number's on the far upper right side. No, no, no last name there. Uh, you want your title, uh, your name, and then the school. Uh, for you all, it's going to be Northeast State Community College, even if you're dual enrollment, because I'm not going to your high school to teach this, right? Uh, but that's what I do do at DB. Uh, you're going to have an abstract page. It's better to do your abstract last because it's hard to summarize an essay you haven't written yet. Uh, you, again, you may, after researching all this, you may have, have some hesitation about uh, whatever program you're going into. Uh, or even, hopefully, you're going to say, yeah, I'm ready. I need to do this. I can't wait to graduate and, and get out there in life. Um, so, your abstract, you're just going to summarize your essay. Um, if you're using the Google template, uh, you're going to be removing some stuff. Uh, you'll see the extra stuff in there for publishing. We're not going to publish these in a journal or anything. Um, but you notice uh, the header shortened down to just that shortened title. You don't have that running head anymore. Uh, you put your title uh, on page three, and then you start your essay. Uh, and here he wants to be a robotics engineer. 
and he kind of kind of tells us, you know, what what's one of the, what's a robotics engineer uh, actually do, and you can kind of see it's a growing field there, right? Uh, in fact, you may be replaced by a ro robot one day, and that's uh, it might will be all Andrew's fault there. Um, well, I don't give out addresses. <laughs> um, but notice when he uses sources, he's going to cite using the first word on the references page. It's a reference called a reference page instead of a works cited page. Uh, first word on the reference page, uh, and the year of publication if it's available, and a page number if it's available. Uh, most of you are going to be using internet sites, so it probably won't have page numbers. Uh, if you're using a source that doesn't have a date, that ND needs to go there to show that there was no date to it. Uh, when you get into social sciences, they're looking for the most recent you know, information available. So that starts to become important. We're kind of fitting a non-APA topic into an APA paper here. So uh, we might see a few more NDs than uh, you might normally see in an APA paper, which is fine. Uh, but he describes what uh, robotic engineers do. Uh, talks about, you know, here's why I just didn't wake up one morning thinking, I guess I'll build robots when I grow up. Uh, he's been doing it for a little bit uh, on the Dobbins robotics team and whatever else he's been doing. Uh, then he gets into the job requirements. Um, and he says, like he says, uh, a master's degree is preferred. That's kind of important to know, unless you want to just be at the bottom rung for the, all your career. Um, are you going to want to go ahead and get your master's, which is easy to say, but that's now you know, two, three more years of uh, college and, and money. Um, it's kind of defining the, the details of the, the field. Uh, then he gets into his academic plans. And kind of notes here, it must pass two exams. Um, and even the second exam, you got to take after five years of experience. So this is a pretty intense field, right? You don't just graduate and call yourself an engineer. You got to do some stuff. Uh, it's going into his academic plan. And again, everybody's essay is going to be hopefully going to be a little different. I don't want to read the same thing with the same number of paragraphs and the same thing in each paragraph because uh, everybody's doing different fields and you're going to spend more time in certain areas. Uh, but he's talking about he's going to go to UT. He's going to get a degree in mechanical engineering with a minor in organ music. Uh, and he kind of explains that. like, here's why that sounds kind of weird, but. You know, I, I love robotics and I love music. Um, that's only 15 more hours, so it's not uh, a major, uh, major more amount of work. Uh, he's a dual enrollment student, so he's accounting for the classes he's taken and will have college credit for, hopefully. So he's kind of projecting into the future a little bit about whether he's going to pass some of these AP exams, but he probably will. He's a good student. Um, and he's going to give you the table that you worked on for uh, reflection number four. Um, in APA, you're going to put table one and give it a title. Uh, hopefully, it's going to tell me which school you're getting it from and what the degree is. He's already told us he's going to UT. <coughs> but it's kind of important for him to account for all these uh, AP classes. Because when I go to look at his, uh, his academic plan, it looks like he's missing classes, but he's missing them because he's already taking them through dual enrollment. Uh, so, you know, most students are going to have to go more than 14 or 13 hours the first semester at UT. Uh, but the dual enrollment has gotten him ahead of the game, right? Uh, at the end of the table, you got to tell me where that information came from. Uh, for a lot of you, it's going to be from the Northeast State website. And you want to go ahead and give me that web address. Um, but make sure you tell us where that table is coming from. Uh, then he talks about how he has to uh, take those exams. Then he talks about the field. Uh, one, the different kind of jobs he, can, he might be able to get, um, whether there's job growth. 5% uh, is not a particularly fast-growing area there. I uh, wish he kind of talked about that maybe a little bit more. Uh, making good money at it, or at least for him. Um, and talked about the upward uh, mobility um, and kind of some of the where the jobs are going to be located. Uh, that's kind of two of a lot of things. You might get a job around here, and you might have to say, oh, well, I'm get a job at Boeing and go to, I think they're in Washington, right? Um, talks about a suitability. Uh, this is kind of what you want to see. Robotic engineers have some of the highest retention rates compared to other professions. That means people enjoy their jobs. Uh, they're not looking to get out of it. Uh, he talks about making himself more marketable. Uh, 
maybe one complaint about this essay. It's other, otherwise a very good essay. Paragraphs are getting a little short and choppy. Might want to expand, expand or combine a couple. But uh, I got inroads into the profession. I got an uncle uh, doing this exact same job. Uh, who he can talk to and say, hey, is this a good job? And hopefully the uncle's going like, yeah, get into it. You know, it's a lot of, the, you know, the classes are intense, the tests are intense, but once you're there, it's, it's a good job. Um, but he's including all the major components I asked for in the assignment sheet. It's got a good look and references page. Uh, don't overthink this too much, just like a works status page. It's just formatted a little differently. I still want the author's uh, last name, comma, then the, the initial of his first name. You don't need the full first name with the APA. Uh, then the date of publication. Uh, if there is no date, you want that ND. Uh, and you're also going to notice that only the first word in an article title is capitalized. That's going to look very strange for if you've only done MLA. Uh, my fingers twitch. <laughs> Always want to you know fix the capitalization, but it's, that's the way it should look. Uh, the only thing that uh, in an article title that would be capitalized are proper nouns. Um, but you kind of the same thing. You give the the article title, then you give the web address, and that you're good to go there. Uh, when you get to the uh, Department of Labor uh, website, uh, it takes a little more. It's actually missing. He needs to to point out uh, he, the robotic engineer part of it, but. Um, pretty good entry there, the government entry. Um, a good looking references page. Got everything working pretty well. Um, but that's kind of what an APA paper looks like, and that's kind of what your next essay is going to be. And again, uh, this isn't a, an exact formula for this essay. Everybody's going to spend different amounts of time on different areas. Um, if, if you're in a program, if you're in something that requires a doctorate degree, you got to spend maybe a little more time on your education than other people will. Um, with nursing, you want to talk about the examinations, uh, the competitive, competitiveness to get into that program. Uh, if Northeast State only takes one out of every hundred nursing applicants, you got to account for that somewhere, right? Not, not that bad, obviously, but um, you know what, what happens if you don't get a nursing program? Um, and I'm not, you know, shouldn't produce anxiety because you're coming up with a plan to get into the program here, right? I'm going to join. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to do everything I can to get selected for that program. And I'm going to be ahead of everybody else who's just sitting around, you know, eating Cheetos and watching TV, right? Um, but that's kind of the second essay. It's it's it sounds easy at first, but it gets a little 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 hard once you kind of get into the details. Uh, but if you have questions about it, let me know. Hopefully, that helps a little bit. And again, I'm going to do a different recording on the LinkedIn page, which hopefully is going to be maybe, I don't know about fun, but a little less intense. Uh, but we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.